Kia ora koutou, everybody. It's so good to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, today we're going to be talking about an intro to decoupled Drupal with the Gatsby front end. It's not going to be too nitty gritty developer or too high level because there were some great presentations about that uh, in the last few years, but we're going to walk through and step through. So have a, quickly having a look at the agenda, a little intro about me, uh, quickly ask the question, why decouple and why not? A decoupled example and some Q&As and a reminder about the Drupal Sprint um, on Friday. So who am I? Stu West, or originally from Cape Town, South Africa. I'm two months in New Zealand, so I'm new to everything. And it's been a wonderful experience so far, getting to know my new team here at Sparks Interactive, where I'm working. Um, I'm a water baby, so in loving, loving anything to do with the water, surfing, sailing, and one day I hope to foil on the lovely waters of Wellington. Um, I love playing music and play a few instruments. And I've been married to Wendy for about 18 years, going strong, and I love cats. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've joined the team at Sparks Interactive here in Wellington. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm a full stack developer focusing on front end and the Drupal site building and developer experience. Um, I love playing with Arduino and WebSockets and linking Arduino to React apps for a bit of human computer interactions and currently learning uh, Vite, JS, Storybook 7 and TypeScript in my spare time. Um, and uh, love using those things in new projects. So I've been on Drupal for about 13 years and been at a few conferences. And one of them in 2021 was the Gatsby conference where I'd have a little funny story to tell you in that in South Africa, uh, a Gatsby isn't Gatsby JS, it looks like this. <laughs> uh, really big meal for the family. Uh, it's really cheap too, but it <laughs> tastes great and it keeps speaking to you to, for a few more days afterwards. So looking at what is decoupled, um, there were a few must watch previous talks, which I'll mention shortly, and then I'll do a quick brief decoupled explainer. So Josh Waihi, who's right here, <laughs> in 2019 spoke about why we're inventing a worse wheel but then followed up in 2022 about the state of Headless and the emergence of Mach or Mac, I think. And um, those really uh, covered such a great array of uh, strategic um, talks into uh, using decoupled, um, the, the maturity of the frameworks that we're using, um, going into things also like caching and CDNs and the things, functions on the edge and all these wonderful things. Um, so definitely worth a watch. And then in 2021 as well, from Spark's team, Marco and Gareth spoke about taking a distribution decoupled with our sector distribution and Gatsby. So for those of you who haven't seen that and just want a little explainer, why decouple? One of the great things is that um, is security. As everything is compiled before being exposed to the web, you automatically get a layer of obscurity from the CMS. So even if your CMS is vulnerable, bad hackers simply cannot find the CMS, as opposed to knowing that user, you know, user login, um, that the, the, the default login for Drupal. Um, another advantage um, when using Gatsby is that hosting usually takes place on a content delivery network, or CDN, uh, which provides many features. Uh, and one of the biggest security, um, for, uh, one of the biggest of those features is DDoS attack prevention. This should mean that even if your site is being hit by a lot of malicious bots, um, uh, those won't get to your backend or the CMS. Um, one still also needs to just, as a note, uh, look out for cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery, um, but there are mitigations for that. Another great thing about decoupling is that you're not limited to a single front end or back end, or you could have multiple front ends and multiple back ends. And also, you could have differing consumers like um, your websites, uh, mobile phones, watches, with a one-to-many um, API connection. Other things like performance. Um, with Gatsby, you get server-side rendering and a few others we'll talk about later too, and deferred static generation. And what that is, is you can decide to perhaps build the first 200 articles or the most viewed articles on your CMS, 
and later on you can decide whether when the person first looks at another page, perhaps a news archive, it would then build the page as it is requested. Or you could use a web crawler, something on cron, that can, outside of build time, slowly just build through maybe thousands of nodes of articles so it doesn't affect um, your initial build time of your site. You also get a diversification of teams, um, a great developer experience in the React and JavaScript um, ecosystem. And with that, um, and using components, um, especially in Gatsby and React type um, ecosystems, uh, control moves from a push approach to a pull approach. Um, it becomes component driven where the component defines data requirements and it's easier to maintain that way. We also get to use lots of modern workflows and there are loads of services and, and we get to use open standards. So services like Gatsby Cloud, Netlify, uh, Lagoon, from the Mezi IO team that's here, um, Vercel, Cloudinary, Algolia Search. There's so many great um, things you can use and a lot of them have a wonderful free, free tier where you get gigabytes of bandwidth and thousands of connections for free. So if I were to say, why not decouple? Um, Drupal gives you so much out of the box. Um, we, if you speak about web form validation, uh, friendly public private file URLs, authentication, if you want to log in or do some sort of authentication against somebody using your site. Um, and there also might be some added hosting costs. But there are numerous contribution model modules that help you get around that, like we spoke about um, decoupled web forms as well. So again, if you didn't know what Gatsby is, um, it's not a two-foot sandwich. Um, it's a very popular JavaScript-based static site generator, or people might say now it's even a dynamic static site generator. Um, uh, HTML content is basically statically generated and um, using React DOM, server-side APIs, and then it's enhanced with client-side JavaScript via React hydration. So what that means is, uh, hydration is the process of use, using client-side JavaScript to add application state and interactivity to server-rendered HTML. It's a feature of React, one of the underlying tools that make the Gatsby framework. I'm just reading the definition because it's probably better that way. Gatsby uses hydration to transform the static HTML created at build time into a React application. Um, What's also great about that is for SEO, you can pre-build your static, your first build with all the, the, the things in the, the markup in the head, your, uh, your open graph or, or schema information so that web crawlers can crawl that really easily and get all the information they need. And then you can hydrate that with all the extra data. And then Gatsby uses GraphQL as a content store um, that enables uh, a page and static query uh, static queries to declare what data they and their subcomponents need, and then Gatsby makes that data available in the browser to the front end in, in, to your components. I really enjoy using GraphQL. It's super quick, and it only returns what you ask for. So in this example, and for those of you have, who have already um, investigated using the Gatsby module, there are a few different plugins that can interact with Drupal. Um, for this demo and in the repo that I'm going to share just with you just now, we're going to use the Gatsby Source Drupal plugin. There's also a Gatsby GraphQL toolkit, um, which allows you to and uh, allows you to use GraphQL um, on Drupal. But then you can also build out a custom schema, and you get the benefits of the Gatsby Source Drupal um, module, so that Drupal and Gatsby can still talk to each other. And whereas if you look at uh, number three there. Gatsby source GraphQL, it's most, the maintainer even says it's deprecated. The reason being is you don't get any of the, um, let's say, benefits um, such as, it's, well, it has known limitations in that it doesn't support incremental builds, CMS preview, image optimizations, and there's a lack of support for the GraphQL data layer. So we'll, we'll look at why that's important in the next few slides. So stepping through, we've got Drupal and Gatsby, and we'll use the latest Drupal 9.5 for now, the stable versions and the Gatsby um, front end JavaScript libraries. 
We'll use Gatsby Source Drupal plugin, and we will require Gatsby module and JSON API to be enabled. There are also some great talks coming up about Next.js and the next integration with Drupal, and building an API with GraphQL 4, and decoupled web forms. So those will be great to add on to this. So these slides will be available online later, but there's the repo with the, the full Drupal running our Drupal sector distribution. Um, it's using DDEV, so very quick to install with a, a database included, so you can just um, SQL C that database in, <laughs> and it will be ready to go. And then the Gatsby front end as well. Uh, just run yarn, yarn start, and you'll be ready to run. So a decoupled walkthrough. Um, we'll require the modules we need, and when we enable Gatsby and Gatsby JSON API extras, a few more modules will be enabled, the content moderation, workflows, JSON API extras, and JSON API. It'll look something like that. If you can see on the screen, Gatsby will be enabled and the extras, JSON API extras, a few more modules too. There's some more as well. Uh, I was trying the JSON API menu items, but couldn't get that to work for the demo, but there are a few others as well. And in your Gatsby module settings, you'll find um, with J JSON API extras, you can set your endpoints URL. We're using the default JSON API. And we, we're switching on the include count in collection queries. And that just speeds up the build time. In JSON API extras as well, we can override all the different endpoints. Um, you can see there that we've got JSON API blocks, um, you can have articles, all your different content types. That um, exposes that to um, your front end. That does um, show a lot of data, just to say, so that you can go into each field and disable the ones that you don't need. Otherwise, you get a huge stack of JSON output. Um, that can slow down when you have, let's say, 40,000 nodes being dumped on your screen. All right, so we're going to use localhost uh, 8000 when you're running um, your Gatsby site. It will go onto those, that port. And there's a little tip which I missed for a few days, which I had to get a team member to point me to. Um, and that Docker has an internal um, URL to be able to communicate with your local host in order to refresh your local development environment when you save a node in Drupal, which I'll show you in just a little bit. That's what the settings look like in the Gatsby module. We'll add some more URLs later when we connect to Gatsby Cloud. And the module allows you to enable various entities in Drupal, um, which you can interact with. So if any of those change, it will send a signal to Gatsby to say, I've just changed the media file. Do you want me to rebuild that out in, on your front end? There are also a variety of performance enhancements that you can enable. So here it's saying that, let's say you have an article and it has three related articles, but those articles also have media. Um, do you, when I save the parent article, do you want it to rebuild everything it's linked to or just the current article? And then again, um, not storing those entity, the self-referenced uh, self entities is what I was talking about now. A few more modules for authentication. The key auth is great. You can use basic authentication, which would just send the username and the password, or the key, which you can add to your environment variables um, on your local host and in your uh, building environment like Gatsby Cloud or Netlify. As co of course, with Drupal, wonderful permissions um, that you can set, you can really lock down if you create a role, like an API role, create a Gatsby user or whatever you'd like to call it, and you can then um, add only what that role needs um, to be able to uh, allow the Gatsby module to send the right information. There's a great walkthrough um, on, on Drupal.org um, on how to do, it, do that with version two of the module. And then on the Gatsby side, on the front end, we're ready to go. Um, one tip is to add the host 0000 so that the Docker that with a special URL 
that Docker can communicate on the local network with the front end. And then environment variables. We're going to add some of those to our local machine, and that allows Gatsby to connect with the Drupal CMS, ready and waiting. In our config, this is really just here for those who are going to look at the slides again. It's a lot of text and code. But something, this is what your, um, your object would look like, uh, passing it to the Gatsby source Drupal that has all the information it needs as to where your Drupal backend is and how you're going to connect with the different authentication keys or usernames. We're ready to go yarn start and run Gatsby. And when it starts, you'll see a whole lot of spinning things and a whole lot of code output in your console. And then Drupal will, um, well, Gatsby will then connect to Drupal and start pulling data from Drupal. And once that's done, as Gatsby uses GraphQL as its content store, you'll be able to see on a link that it gives you. Oh, that's a little bit dark, apologies. But that allows you to uh, see all that Drupal gives you. So on the top hand side, on your left hand side, there's all Drupal nodes and your query in the middle and then the JSON looking output. I think this next slide is also gonna be pretty dark. This is what we would have on the Gatsby side. And I'll show you in a little bit, we're gonna have a list of nodes that we've pulled from Drupal. On the left is the JavaScript or the JSX, the, the template that we're gonna hydrate the information from Drupal into the templates. And on the right is a query of two different lists of pages and articles. The next thing that the Gatsby Drupal module gives you is a open Gatsby preview button. So what we will end up doing is disabling Drupal's um, default preview and enabling the Gatsby one. And that looks like this. So we'll disable the default one, enable the preview. And voila, we'll have a little video playing in a little bit of what happens next. On the left-hand side, we have Drupal. And on the right, we have the local host Gatsby site waiting. It's been set to be in preview mode. So any change on, in its data source will be made live within a few seconds. So firstly, what I'm going to do is just click Save in uh, Drupal on the left, changing the title. And then I'm going to click Save. And then on the right, you'll see the preview. Just change to draft. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the page again, and this time just click Open Gatsby Preview, which will open a new tab, and it will show you the draft too. You saw on the right that it changed as well. The only way that um, the Gatsby plugin can know or tell Gatsby from Drupal that it's changed is if you save it first. Um, there might be ways of changing that later, but that's how it works. All right, I think I'm actually speeding through much faster than I thought, so I'll just slow down a little bit and talk like that. So, you might uh, note that when you start up Gatsby, you get one or two errors. And normally that's because you, you're using the, uh, a wrong authentication key. Um, maybe the API, the URL you're using is wrong. Or on your local host, Gatsby isn't able to connect to your Docker environment or whatever your, like maybe it's DDEV, which uses Docker, or some local environment, and you might have to investigate an SSH tunnel or something like that. This works quite nicely on live, which we're gonna try right now. So hopefully the internet will be working and uh, happy. So, we're gonna do a Gatsby preview now, um, and then a build. Um, you can do this on multiple services. So you can run builds on Gatsby Cloud, Netlify, or another service. You can use GitHub Actions or GitLab Pipelines or on Lagoon. But you will need a node environment to be running. So you'll have almost like you're running a local Yarn dev um, instance in your preview node. And then when you do save and build, you'll, that will get built out on a certain part of your hosting whether it's Gatsby Cloud or something customized that you've done. When we are ready for that, 
we'll change our URLs um, in the Gatsby module in Drupal. So up at the top left there, we've got um, our Gatsby sector demo master. <laughs> that's just the name that Gatsby Cloud gave me. And then we've got our webhook. That's going to, uh, is how your Drupal module is going to connect with Gatsby Cloud. Your build hook and a content, content sync URL. And on the right, you'll see this Gatsby dashboard, which gives you all the information about your builds and where you add in your settings. There are the two links to see things happening. And we're going to try this. Hopefully, everything will work. But before we do that, suspense and anticipation. One or two things to think about. Um, if you have loads of nodes and loads of paragraphs that are also deeply nested, you're going to want to think about how you do your builds and how many items you're going to build out at once. Um, as soon as you go paragraph, 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 we've seen in production that uh, things just run out of time and Gatsby just has to cancel uh, during your build time. So you're going to want to maybe um, only download or have a certain amount of concurrent sessions um, uh, and uh, yeah, really just like limit how much you do at once uh, or when you do it. But this is getting better and better as we go. With Gatsby 5, we can use all the new technology like slices and a whole variety of new tech to make things work much faster. Um, you're also going to want to think about your content. Um, have, you, have you used absolute URLs inside your content? Um, you might need to pass that and clean that up a little bit. Um, also files, if um, your file downloads, uh, maybe manuals for like schematics, if those are already indexed in Google, and now you're going to change to decoupled where you might have a back-end dot your site and a front-end dot, Gatsby's going to need to somehow get those files and display them, and when they download, which URL they're going to come from, and there are ways to get around that with maybe a proxy, um, but something to think about. For me, when would I decouple? Um, I quite like the idea as, of Drupal as a content store with multiple sites pulling from it, maybe different news sections or sites um, with different front ends. You can spin up micro, uh, multiple microsites. Um, and then content editors just need to know about one um, content management sort of source where they edit. Maybe instead of using the domain module, um, which is also wonderful, but can get really big and, and quite crazy when you have multiple sites. So I'm going to try and do a live demo, and let's see what happens. OK, on the left, we've got a live site with our page in Drupal. And let's see if I can click that. Then we're going to have our Gatsby dashboard open and waiting with our a Gatsby preview running. Well, actually, this is the live site. And I'll show you the preview in a little bit. One thing just to say, earlier I mentioned where you could add your environment variables. In your Gatsby Cloud preview, you can just scroll down and add your vi variables for your site with your username and password or your um, authentication key over here. So that just keeps it out of uh, Git or the file system, which is better. So back to dashboard over here. And another little thing, caveat, is that I'm using the free mode. So I don't get incremental builds. So it will take a little bit longer in this demo, maybe five seconds instead of one second. But I'm sure you won't mind. OK, here we go. We're going to click over here and just change the name of the title, something like that. First, I'm going to go open Gatsby Preview. There should be a new tab. And this is the part where I haven't paid for faster rendering. So just stretch for a little bit. While we're waiting, you can see it building over here in, your, in my dashboard, over there. Data update from Drupal. Polishing your site also gives you some links here in case you need to go to the Gatsby dashboard and uh, or find the link. 
at this moment, only, only the piece that's changed. Yeah. Um, but it's actually doing a, li a full build, sorry. It's doing a full build because I'm on the free version. If I had the paid version, it would only do an incremental, just, just like that. And that's why it's taking a little bit longer. Sorry about the wait. Let's just switch over and make sure everything has changed and I haven't perhaps changed details. It's still going. That's fine. It's a fun part of doing live demos. Yes. You can, um, but you have to do a little bit of work. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yes. yes. Especially with the, the, um, the Gatsby Toolkit plugin. Uh, that allows you to link in um, and do some more customization. Uh, I, yeah. So I wouldn't be able to see this if I wasn't logged in. Um, so this one's in Gatsby Cloud, but what um, we've done in the past is you use an iframe in Drupal in your theme that pulls the secure preview URL in, and then you'd only be able to see it if you're logged into Drupal. So pass, do a sort of a handoff between the two. This is taking longer than when I prepared it, but it could be because we are down on the first floor and something is happening. So excuse that. Any other questions while we wait? Uh, yes, yes, you can preview the revisions. You could also have an unpublished node and then just have a look at it. Although, would it save it? It would save it in a draft state, and then um, you'd be able to preview it and then make it published again. But at least I did film it that it <laughs> did work. All right. It would be funny if there's actually um, maintenance going <laughs> on. That is quite a long build. Let's just see what happens. I think what I'm going to do is go back here. Oh, maybe I just need to refresh my screen. Polishing, building your preview. This is when we need elevator music. Maybe what I should just do is save it. It will, but then at least I could show you <laughs> what it looks like on the other side. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. There it is. So sorry, maybe I just clicked the wrong thing. So yeah, so this is a very brief uh, few days just recreating our sector distribution in Gatsby, but it's literally just the front page. Um, I wanted to show you the menu. If I quickly go like this. Um, so we have our, our main pages. Here we have a list of pages where I showed you the query earlier on. Um, I also had a little bit of fun putting that into a watch. Um, um, so just to show that you, <laughs> not that it's a real watch, but you know what I mean, you could have multiple consumers of your data from Drupal. Um, I promise it works faster in real life, um, so that's my fault. Um, but that's really it. Um, thank you for sitting through.